let me ask you, you said you, you dated John. How long did you guys date? I mean, well, are you guys, is this something, I mean, you said I was going to interview somebody about art and how well, you guys are. Here's, here's <laughs> I mean. Step Deception is indicated multiple times within the first 15 minutes of Stephanie Lazarus's interview before her arrest. With SA, I'll point out the instances where Stephanie's being deceptive about how well she knew her ex-boyfriend John. In SA, it's important to understand how the brain works. Since the brain obviously contains our experiential memory, it always wants to tell the truth even when a subject is concealing the truth or lying. This is why we say that people want to tell the truth even when they don't. Let's hear how Stephanie's words betray her. We've been assigned a case that we've been looking at. Okay. okay. It's a new case and reviewing the case, there's some notes uh, to see that as far as your name being mentioned. Do oh, you, okay. Do you know John Rutten? John Rutten? John Rutten? Rutten. Right. Oh yeah, I went to school with them. You did? Yeah. In a police interview setting, the subject will frequently answer questions with other questions. This is done to buy more time and also to avoid answering the question directly. Yeah. Stephanie does right. this multiple right. times. Here she's asking for the correct pronunciation. Another thing to look for is undisclosed information. Notice. She doesn't start off mentioning that she dated John, which she admits later. Instead, she says she oh, went yeah, to school with him. For each question, she gives more information. An observation like this tells us that the information is sensitive to her for some reason. She also leaves out information in her next statement. Listen to this. How long did you know him? Gosh, well, I went to school in... Um Let's see, went to UCLA in 1978, I started and, um, you know, met him at school, at the dorms. Mm -hmm. um, Overall, Stephanie uses a lot of interjections, exclamations, or mild oaths. In these types of interviews, interjections are often there to convince the detectives that the subject's surprised and that they hardly remember the events in question. However, Rather than sounding surprised, Stephanie's interjections make her sound nervous about the questions. The contraction, let's, is a so-called associating linguistic element. It makes it sound like this is going to be a collaborative effort between her and the detectives, when the truth is, she's the only one implied in the question. You know also has an associating effect, to make it seem like the detectives know what she's talking about even though this isn't the case. Stephanie uses this expression excessively. We take note of it because it shows us that she's acutely aware of the detective's presence. Typically, this suggests that the subject's nervous. She says, met him, which sounds distant. But in the following, notice how she drops more and more information about the quote-unquote friendship. Indirectly and unwillingly, she reveals that she's been hiding information. Were you guys friends, close friends? Yeah, we're very close friends. I yeah. Mean, I mean, what's this all about? Well, it's regarding, it's a case we're working on. It involves John, and in there, some of the statements we, we reviewed, uh, you know, there's notes and stuff that he, that he knew you and stuff. Oh, yeah. I mean, we good friends. Um, lived in the dorms for, I lived in the dorms for two years. Um, you guys lived in the same dorm? Yeah. Or, okay. Yeah, Dijkstra. Notice the way she responds to this. Let's hear it one more time. Oh yeah, I mean we were good friends. Um, lived in the dorms for, I lived in the dorms for two years. Um, you guys lived in the same dorm. Yeah. Or, okay. Yeah, Dijkstra. The first time she leaves out the verb. She says we, but not were. This is done committal. The second time she doesn't say we. She only says lived. The lack of a personal pronoun is called pronoun omission. She then makes a self-repair to include the subject I. Self-repairs are self-initiated interruptions of self-initiated utterances. As a result of this pronoun omission, she doesn't associate with John. This is in line with what we've observed so far. 
She doesn't want it to sound like she had a close connection to John. However, her pronoun omission before her self-repair leaves room for doubt about the living situation. Therefore, it makes sense that the detective asks her if they lived in the same dorm. He's obviously noticed that this information is sensitive to her. Okay, were you guys just friends or anything else? Or? Yeah, we were, we were good friends. Yeah. Unwillingly, she reveals that there's more to the story. She starts off with a self-repair. In a context like this, self-repairs indicate hesitation and they occur when the subject's thinking of something else than simply answering. Thus, they're a sign of internal stress. And we want to know what causes this internal stress. There's another hesitation marker in form of the two-second pause. All in all, this is a complex answer. Yeah, we were, we were it's complex because it's not straightforward. Stephanie obviously has more on her mind than she's willing to share. Her own words reveal as much. Was there ever any relationship or anything to develop between you guys? Yeah, I mean, we dated, uh, uh -huh. you know, um, I mean, is, what's this all about? Once again, the fact that Stephanie hasn't admitted that they were dating until now tells us that she's tried to hide this piece of information. Also, we should pay attention to her hedging language. Hedges include verbs like think and guess, and adverbs like kind of and almost. Hedges express equivocation. They're non-committal and gives the subject leeway to retract the statement at a later point without directly contradicting said statement. Overall, Stephanie uses an excessive amount of hedges. You know expresses sensitivity about the dating situation, and she's again answering a question with a question. Instead of detailing the dating situation, she wants to know what this is all about. She's stalling. Well, it's relating to uh, his wife. Okay. Okay. Did you know her? Not really. I mean, I knew that he got married years ago. A statement like this is the exact reason why S.A. asserts that the brain wants to tell the truth, even though the subject's trying to hide the truth. She says, not really. This vague expression points to the fact that she actually did know John's wife. And the hedge, I mean, further weakens that she didn't really know her, as she says. She says she knew that John got married to her. Later on, she says that she knew she got killed. Do you know what happened to his wife? Yeah, I know she got killed. Again, she reveals her knowledge bit by bit, which tells us that she's been withholding information. I'm going to play a longer clip where we observe some of the things I've explained so far. Uh-huh. Did you ever meet her? God, I don't know. Um, Do you know who she was or anything? Well, I... Let me think. God, it's been a long time ago. Mm -hmm. um, um, I, I may have met her. Um, geez. You know. Yeah. Uh, well, let me see. Let me ask you. You said you, you dated John. How long did you guys date? I mean, well, are you guys... Is this something... I mean, you said that I was going to interview somebody about art and how well, you guys are... Here's, here's, <laughs> I mean... Stephanie, here's the situation. It's basically... Next, Stephanie uses another common tactic, the time argument. Listen to this. You know, God, that's been a million years ago. I mean, you know, um, what year is it now? 2009? I mean, I graduated in 82. 82, mm. yeah. Um, you know, we dated. Um, I dated other guys. I'm sure he dated other girls. Um, mm. A million years ago is a hyperbole that linguistically gives a leeway to not remember inconvenient details, details that go against her narrative. The time argument is one that we often hear, that we have to think a certain way because it's a certain year. However, there's no necessary causality in this argument. Likewise, in Stephanie's statement, just because it's 2009 doesn't mean that she shouldn't be able to remember a romantic connection she's had in the past. On the contrary, people most often remember these connections. If we consider this fact, along with the details that she suddenly starts remembering in the following, it's clear that she's being deceptive about her memories. 
Lastly, notice how she now makes the dating sound trivial. We observe this in both her language and body language. We've come a long way since a distancing verb met. But she didn't admit to the dating out of her own free will. The detectives had to ask her repeatedly. Therefore, it's unconvincing that she's now trying to make the dating sound harmless and trivial. She keeps moving the goalposts. In the following, pay close attention to three things. One, how she contradicts herself by actually remembering specific details. Two, the equivocation in her language about how long she dated John. And three, how she avoids answering how long she dated John by bringing up her husband, Scott. She's stalling, calming herself with pleasant topics to avoid the stress of unpleasant truths. Well, let me ask you. <laughs> Roughly, how long would you, would you say you guys dated? Oh, jeez. Um, I couldn't even say. I mean, I started school there in 78. Mm -hmm. I started UCLA in 1978. Mm -hmm. I graduated in 82. Um, I don't even remember what year he graduated, if it was a year or two before me. Okay. Um, I think he was a little bit older than I was. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, I can't remember if he was born, let's say I was born in... 60, 1960. I don't know if he was born in 58 or 59. I mean, I, you know, um, I mean, I knew his parents. I knew his sister. His brother went to Northridge. Mm -hmm. um, um, you know, his sister spent the night at my house before. Obviously, I spent the night at his house before. He probably spent the night at my house before. Um, you know, I, I, yeah. you know, I don't. I, well, correct me if I'm wrong, because. From what you're telling me, is you guys dated while you were in college together, right? Yeah, and probably after college. Um, I'm, I, I can't. Jeez, um, I'm trying to think when I met my husband. I met my husband in. When did I meet Scott? Um, let's see. I was teaching Dare because I met Scott when I was teaching Dare up in Oregon. But we had long stopped, you know, dating before that. So you um, haven't talked to him for a long time. Oh, I, I think I haven't talked to him in a long time. Um, I couldn't even tell you when the last time I talked to him. Um, I met Scott, I'm thinking, in 92, maybe, um, April of 92. It was Scott being your husband. Yeah, I'm trying to think. I was teaching D.A.R.E. Let's see, what year is this? She says, I'm trying to think, and I believe her. She is indeed trying. She doesn't present her thoughts and memories in a straightforward manner. She appeals to her mind, thus showing awareness of what she's doing and showing awareness of the detectives. In the following, notice how her hedging language weakens her own assertion that she and John had a weird relationship. I mean, wh wh you know, what's, uh, what's, I mean, what's this all about? I mean... Well, let me ask you, what ended the relationship between you and John? You know, I don't... It was kind of a weird relationship. I mean, we 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 dated. Um, I can't say that he was my boyfriend. I don't know that he would consider me his girlfriend. Um, we just we dated. We did things. I played sports in college. He played basketball. His brother played basketball. Um, it, it, we just, you know, it just didn't work out. I mean, I don't know what to tell you. It was like I went out with other guys, um, saw other guys. I went on lots of vacations. Um, you know, both kind of and I mean weaken the alleged weirdness of their relationship. Both hedges retract that assertion. The repetition of we is a self-repair that indicates internal stress. Once again, stress relating to the verb dated. She obviously doesn't like this word because it links her to John. Just is used to compare two different thoughts. Like when someone says, we're just friends, you know that the opposite thought has been on that person's mind. Since we don't get to hear the other thought, just is noted as undisclosed information. The two-second pause gives her additional time to think, and notice that she jumps to the end of the relationship. No one asked her if it worked out or not. She's the one making it about this. In conclusion, it's obvious that she doesn't want to talk about it. This points to guilty knowledge. She says, I don't know what to tell you, thereby showing us that she's highly aware of the detectives and of what she's saying. 
Indirectly, she points to the fact that she knows she should say something, but she obviously doesn't want to. In the following, things get almost comical when Stephanie remembers going to Hawaii with John. Bit by bit, she's disproving her own claim that it's difficult for her to remember. Listen to this. And, and once you guys split, were you guys still friends or kind of, uh, you know, I problems? Mean, Is it friendly, not friendly? No, I don't think it was not friendly. I mean, we were friendly. Um, uh, I know that we went to Hawaii um, at one point. Um, another friend of mine who's actually dying right now uh, was uh, went to Hawaii with us um, at some point. She mentions another friend who was with them. Again, she's trying to disassociate from John. She knows that John is a dangerous subject. Next, she's asked about John's wife. Um, Remember roughly when that was? Jeez, oh, um, let me think. Hmm, I'd have to check my pictures. Um, or I'd, I'd say I'd ask Greg, but my friend Greg is like dying of liver cancer right mm. now. Um, yeah, I mean, I, you know. And you were it's, saying that. Um, the, it's 2009 now. Had you ever met his wife? I may have. Do you know, do you remember her name or anything, or? Um, um, or what she did for a living, or where she worked, or anything uh, about her? Well, I think she, I th I'm going to say that I think she was a nurse. Um, man, I can't even remember how he, he said he met her. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, yeah, I mean, it's been so long ago. Stephanie was asked about her remembrance of John's wife. But she tries making it about how John met his wife. Again, she's stalling, buying more time to think about her wording. Next, notice how the detective's question makes her nervous. The associating you know appears multiple times in her language. I mean, you know, it's, it's been a million years ago. Do you remember if you ever talked to her? Because it seems like a lot of you who were at, at the school at UCLA, you guys kind of were friends during and after school. so. I don't know if you guys still associated afterwards when, once he was married or anything. With him? Yeah. No, I don't think so. I yeah. mean, I would say, you know, the the people that were on the dorm floor, we'd have, we'd have get-togethers. Um, there's probably like four or five. I don't think he ever came. Um, yeah, mm -hmm. I don't think, no. It was, there was like, it was mostly girls, you know, um, a girl named Smita. Diane, um, there's another, there's two Dianes, but the one Diane, I don't think she ever came. I kind of lost contact with her. We were good friends on the floor. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't, you know, again, I, I mean, what, you know, I don't understand why you're talking about some guy I dated a million years ago. Again, she's answering the question with a question, and she retracts her hitch, don't think, with another hitch, I mean thus implicitly overemphasizing her doubt about this. She says it was mostly girls, but this adverbial modification is irrelevant to the question about whether or not John was there. She's not answering, but talking around the issue. Mostly doesn't exclude that John could have been there. Next, Stephanie's again exaggerating how long it's been, and she reveals yet another piece of information that she knows, that John's wife was killed. Do you know what happened to his wife? Yeah, I know she got killed. The detective seems to pick up on Stephanie's selective memory, and he asks her what she's heard about that. What, um, did, you, what did you hear about that? I, I saw a poster at work. Um, I'm sure I spoke to him about it. Um, I think I spoke to another friend of his about it. Um, and how did, how did you first learn about that? Jeez. <laughs> Someone could have called me. I could have heard it at work. Um, Stephanie's equivocating language betrays her constantly. It's highly unlikely that she can't be more certain who she spoke to about it. This isn't an ordinary event. Her hitching language gives her away, and deception is confirmed at this point in the interview. Deception is also confirmed by her recurring dramatizations of how long it's been trying to make it seem like it's the detectives that are dumb for even asking her. Listen to this. But being that you're kind of, you used to see uh, John, 
you know, was it everything okay between you guys? I mean, there was never anything uncomfortable or anything between you and her? Um, you know, I don't know. I mean, it's, God, it's been so many years. I mean, uncomfortable, I mean, I, I can't even, I can't even remember if we had a conversation. I mean, we may have, I may have, I may have seen her at his apart. you know, jeez. How many years ago is that? I don't even know what year she, you know, got killed. First, we observe a turn initial delay, um, followed by a hesitation marker, indicating that she's uncomfortable with the question. It's unreliable that she makes excuses for her alleged lack of memory. Why? Because she was asked about whether or not things were uncomfortable between John's wife and her. We remember who we don't feel comfortable with. This is basic human nature. Considering this fact, and the fact that she doesn't give a straightforward answer, but a delayed one, she indirectly and unwillingly admits that things were uncomfortable between them. In the act of trying to hide the truth, she reveals the truth. Furthermore, she keeps negating her previous statements by suddenly remembering specific details about where John lived, even though she's emphasized that she hardly remembers anything. Listen to this. Where was his apartment? On Roscoe. Okay. Yeah, Roscoe and um, um, east or west of DeSoto, uh, either east or west of DeSoto. Do you know where he moved after? Did, and did he move after he got married, or do you know? Or oh, I'm sure he did. Did you know where um, he was living, or somewhere in the valley? Did you ever visit him? In the following, we again notice hitches in Stephanie's language, but we also notice another interesting thing, that she's aware of using hitches to protect herself. Pay close attention to what she says in the end. But you, you don't, you're not sure where he moved to after he got married? No idea. I mean, Never I, went over to, to visit him or I don't think, I mean, I don't or, think so. I mean, um... I don't know. I don't. I mean, I don't think I did. Um, I mean, I know he lived on Roscoe for a long, long time. Um, I mean, he, I may know. I mean, he may have told me where they lived, uh -huh. somewhere in the valley. I mean, he may have said he, I lived over such and such, but I, I couldn't tell you specifically where. But you don't remember specifically ever going over to visit him or visit them at where, wherever he moved when he left Roscoe. I, I, I honestly, I don't know. I don't think so, but, okay. I, you know, I don't want to say, no, I don't think so. And then he says, oh, yeah, she came over for something, dropped something off. You know, I, I'm, it, I don't know. In SA, we believe what people tell us. Stephanie's showing intention here. She says, I don't want to say, which is a strong assertion. It shows us that she thinks of herself first and foremost. Unwillingly, she also gives a reason for her excessive amount of hedges during this interview. I don't want to say, no, I don't think so, and then he says, oh yeah, she came over for something, dropped something off. So the hedges are there to give her leeway to retract her statements at a later point. This isn't SA saying this anymore. This is Stephanie herself. She's engaging in linguistic self-defense mechanisms and deliberate behavior that point to guilty knowledge and she's showing a suspiciously high level of self-awareness. She's behaving like a guilty person. A person's words are more powerful than a person's intentions. Stephanie Lazarus can't control her language, despite her intention to sound innocent. 